Who are the best linebackers in the NFL today? What's going on, bottom line viewers? It's Mitch here, ranking the best linebackers in the NFL, the top 25 off the ball linebackers in the game today. If that sounds good, don't forget to gronk spike the like button and subscribe to the channel for more NFL position rankings just like this all summer long. If you enjoy my videos, enjoy my content, and you want to support my journey as a creator, the best way to do so is by becoming a BLV patron. Over there we have exclusive content, including the BLV vs. Consensus podcast, which is a lot of fun, where we discuss our opinions versus the consensus NFL community. Now, let's rank some linebackers. Kicking off my top 25 linebackers in the NFL today at number 25, Leighton Vander Esch of the Dallas Cowboys. It is so awesome to see LVE, Leighton Vander Esch, back on this list because once upon a time as a young football player he looked to be one of the up and coming best linebackers in the game a rare breed of size intelligence and fluidity as an athlete in recent years he's obviously dealt with some injuries but the last couple of seasons he's been able to stay healthy and contribute to a team that has really felt his presence when he's been on the field in the middle of their defense, calling out checks, making sure everyone's in the right position, making his impact felt, especially in coverage, with his length to be able to bat down passes and get in passing lanes, but also his size in the running game. And the biggest thing that Leighton Vander Esch does for this defense is allow versatility with the front allow Micah Parsons to play on the defensive line. Leighton Vander Esch is a really good football player that almost has become an under-the-radar good linebacker in this league. At number 24, Alex Singleton of the Denver Broncos. Alex Singleton, once upon a time, believe it or not, played in the CFL up here with me in Canada. But Alex Singleton has proven to be a good football player in this league for the Denver Broncos. Last year, he was one of the best football players in the run game. One of the most ferocious, consistent tacklers in all of football and had top 10 levels of stops in the running game last season. Alex Singleton has already proven to be a huge asset to the next regime. Sean Payton was raving about his intelligence, his consistency, his reliability in all aspects of playing the linebacker position from the run game to coverage to being the leader of the defense, which is so important when you're that middle linebacker. Alex Singleton has taken his game to the NFL level and proven to be an NFL caliber good football player at number 24. At number 23, Patrick Queen of the Baltimore Ravens. I personally, after watching Patrick Queen in his first couple seasons in the NFL, never thought he would make it as a legit top 25 linebacker in this league. It was pretty bad. His tackling, his coverage responsibilities, even the run game. He just didn't seem to have a feel for the NFL level after being a first round pick Coming out of LSU as one of those LSU athletic linebackers that we saw with Devin White, where Devin White has been super inconsistent throughout his career, Patrick Queen has been the same, but when you put a Roquan Smith beside him and calm him down a little bit and simplify his responsibilities, all of a sudden you see Patrick Queen for what he is, a phenomenal athlete that pops every single game. His freakish speed, agility, and just overall explosion is what he brings to the Ravens and the NFL. His ability to become a great blitzer has definitely been showcased in Baltimore. His agility sideline to sideline is certainly there, and I think he's evolving in his coverage responsibility, 
understanding zone coverages, feeling the passing game better. I think Patrick Queen is just beginning his surge to becoming a very good linebacker in the NFL. He certainly has all the athletic ability to become one of the best. At number 22, Jerome Baker of the Miami Dolphins. For a long time, Jerome Baker has been one of my favorite under-the-radar linebackers, watching him grow in Miami. Jerome Baker is a similar player to a Patrick Queen. Extremely athletic, but I feel like he's been more consistent in the running game throughout his career. Jerome Baker is that downhill shoot a gap blitzing linebacker that has really succeeded in this Flores Patriot-esque scheme the last couple of seasons in Miami because he can shoot a gap so fast he's so explosive he has such great acceleration that bam he's one of the fastest in football in that regard he's growing though as a run defender sensing the trash in front of him and trying to get to the running back trying to shed blocks he's growing in the passing game i'm excited to see how he will look with another good linebacker beside him and david long he hasn't really had that asset over the last couple of years so i think he's a good football player that has consistently been pretty good but i think he's rounding out his game entering 2023 at number 21, David Long Jr. of the Miami Dolphins. Yup, David Long right after Jerome Baker. Miami signed a super underrated football player here this offseason. They got him for cheap, and that was extremely shocking to see the value of David Long on the open market. The only thing I could really think of was... His availability is maybe what scared teams. Because he's a little bit smaller, maybe he doesn't fit every scheme in the NFL. And he is maybe a little reckless as a linebacker. The stats speak for themselves. There's a reason this guy led the NFL in average depth of tackle. That means he keeps plays and run game plays to a minimum. Because he's at the line of scrimmage launching himself into the defensive line if you've ever watched him play he is a little reckless but he's extremely well-rounded he's got the speed agility change of direction ability more importantly than anything to be able to play in zone coverage and match receivers and tight ends and coverage he's also reckless and fearless in the running game to be able to tackle and smoke people at the line of scrimmage and he is a competent blitzer as well playing in tennessee under mike vrabel's scheme so He's a complete player. I'm extremely intrigued to see how he fits with Vic Fangio. Vic Fangio really over his history has valued the linebacker position and David Long could be an extremely undervalued fit in Miami in 2023. At number 20, Jawan Bentley of the New England Patriots. Jawan Bentley was just given a fresh new extension, a contract by Belichick and the Patriots to lead their defense. And more importantly than anything, now that Devin McCourty is gone from the Patriots, they need a defender, a vocal leader to step up, and I do believe it will be Jawan Bentley. He hasn't always been the favorite of Patriots fans because he is an old school player. He is a big thumping linebacker, and these players don't really exist that much in the NFL anymore. But I will say, Jawan Bentley is coming off his best season of his career. He graded as a top 10 PFF linebacker this year, and he greatly improved his greatest weakness, which was coverage. He actually, in terms of intelligence, is one of the smartest linebackers in the league, and he's always been great against the run because he's big, he can get off blocks, and he can fit in the running game as basically another defensive lineman due to his size and strength. He brings pop to the running game with big hits, and he's just a really good field general for the position, exactly what New England has always had in Dante Hightower, Teddy Bruschi, and in this Belichick defense, Bentley is that type of guy. But in the modern NFL, you have to be good in coverage, which is why I've never had him that high on my lists. But last year, he really evolved in that regard. So as long as he can continue that, he is actually probably one of the most underrated players at his position in the league. 
At number 19, Frankie Louvu of the Carolina Panthers. Frankie Louvu came on the scene big time this year. Just breakout year out of nowhere from this guy playing alongside Shaq Thompson. What I love about Frankie is his versatility. He brings an edge rusher turned off ball linebacker. So you have so much flexibility with what you can do. You can align him out on the edge and he can rush the quarterback. He's obviously going to be a good pass rusher from the inside, rushing against guards and centers in blitz packages. And he's going to be able to be good in the running game because he has natural size. But he also didn't seem to be out of place when it came to playing off the ball and having coverage responsibilities. He, as long as he could continue to do that and have enough speed and quickness to do that, I think he's a good enough athlete to continue to play this position in this NFL. I just love those type of players that are asked to do a multitude of things, can step up and can perform. And last year, Obviously, one of the best run defenders at this position in the league. I really like how he compliments Shaq Thompson in Carolina. Don't sleep on Luvu entering 2023. At number 18, Nick Bolton of the Kansas City Chiefs. Nick Bolton had a big time play in the Super Bowl, obviously, but has always been a big time player for the Kansas City Chiefs defense very important and very very kind of overlooked i would say not necessarily underrated a lot of people think he's good but it's more like an overlooked thing he's not the loudest personality or loudest playmaker on that defense or that team but he's just consistent and reliable he's really good in the running game he's got good stocky size to him and he's great at pursuing downhill. He's a great downhill linebacker. His ability to see the run game, shoot a gap, just because he reads things extremely well. Highly intelligent. And because he's highly intelligent, he's not the most agile or speedy linebacker in the league. He's not necessarily slow, but because of his intelligence and the way he reads offenses, he is able to be decent enough in the passing game although that's not his primary objective on a weekly basis nick bolton's a really capable football player that is kind of like the glue to the chiefs super bowl defense at number 17 bobby okariki or okariki or okariki but depending on how you say it literally i've heard like 15 different pronunciations bobby is a really good football player and he's now a new york giant a member of the g-men and the thing that the giants were chasing in bobby's game is his speed is his downhill fearlessness versus the run game this guy packs explosion and packs power into every play on the football field he is going to fix the sideline to sideline agility of the linebacker position that did not exist in New York previously. He's also very rangy in the passing game. He can drop back in a cover two and play the middle of the field and bat down passes and run with tight ends or slot receivers. He has that type of speed at the linebacker position. He is a modern linebacker with great, great pursuit in the running game and range in the passing game. He's a great pickup for the Giants this season. At number 16, Shaq Thompson of the Carolina Panthers. Shaq Thompson has carried on the tradition of great linebacker play in Carolina. You have, of course, Thomas Davis, Luke Keekley, even further back, John Beeson. Shaq Thompson is in that lineage of linebackers that can spot drop in zone coverage that are fluid as athletes that cover a ton of horizontal ground everywhere in the running game in the passing game and a very smart football player in all regards i will say that he this season in particular was excellent against the run as pff graded him if not the top player against the run at his position one of the top players 
His ability to close space quickly has always been his greatest asset as a phenomenal athlete at this position. Shaq Thompson just continues to go under the radar as a very good football player for the Carolina Panthers. At number 15, Logan Wilson of the Cincinnati Bengals. Logan Wilson is one of my favorites when he's really on his game because he's an extremely intelligent, heady football player that seems to be in the right spot at the right time, especially in coverage. He really has a knack for playing the football, for getting his hands on the football, and for being in the right spot at the right time. And that is maybe the biggest thing that you have to do well as a linebacker in coverage. Because obviously you can't run with everybody. You can't cover these guys man-to-man -man all game long. But if you're just in the right spot and read quarterbacks well, that's what Logan Wilson does. I will say he's not the greatest in the run game in the world with his ability. Maybe to be a little bit undersized and not super aggressive. He's a little conservative in the running game, but I do think that he at times has showcased top 10 ability at this position, especially with his playmaking ability alone. I really like Logan Wilson for the leader that he is in the middle of the defense for the Cincinnati Bengals. At number 14, TJ Edwards of the Chicago Bears, formerly of the Philadelphia Eagles. TJ Edwards is just the definition of a very steady, reliable, well-rounded linebacker in this league. He's not as flashy as a lot of linebackers in the league. He's not a super big hitter. He's not the greatest athlete, although he is a solid athlete. He's just good at everything and really can be relied upon in zone coverage, is good in the running game, pursues the ball very well, can cover space quickly in zone coverage and was that exceptional linebacker for the eagles on a team that really didn't have any good linebackers for quite some time tj edwards filled that role and allowed this defense to play the way they played right he's playing the middle of this defense that plays a ton of zone coverage that really doesn't rush extra people all the time so he's constantly dropping back into coverage I think he's going to be successful under Matt Eberflus because of what he was asked to do in Philadelphia. Him alongside Tremaine Edmonds, I think is going to be one of the best linebacker duos in football. He's just super, super steady. I think he's a top 15 linebacker in this league. At number 13, Jermaine Pratt of the Cincinnati Bengals. Jermaine Pratt, I have above his teammate this season, Logan Wilson. And the reason is Jermaine Pratt is an elite pass coverage linebacker one of the best in football over the past two seasons i believe was up there for passer rating allowed this past year at the linebacker spot and he really does everything he's a great athlete he's big he's fast he's quick and he's got the length to be able to cover space knock down passes to be able to run with tight ends and man coverage at times to be able to play zone coverage. And because of his length and his size, he's also pretty good in the running game. So I think he's a more well-rounded player than Wilson. And at least this past year, I think he was a better playmaker than Wilson. So I really like Pratt, man. I think he is the elite linebacker that doesn't get enough recognition. I'm actually surprised that Cincinnati was able to hold on to him because he's a very good football player that is the glue of Big Lou's defense in Cincinnati. At number 12, Devondre Campbell of the Green Bay Packers. Now, Devondre Campbell did not have the all-pro season that he had in 2021, but he still showcased his greatness in pass coverage. He is so good in pass coverage, and it's not because he's like the quickest, but his size and his length is rare for a guy that does move that well in coverage. And his again i just keep bringing this up it's a common theme with guys that are good in pass coverage in today's nfl at linebacker it's the length the ability to cover up so much space in zone coverage and then the intelligence is an obvious factor when you watch devondre campbell i've always felt that devondre campbell was underrated you know dating back to atlanta i felt he didn't get enough recognition in that scheme where they asked him to do a whole bunch that maybe they shouldn't have been asking him to do like cover the best tight ends in football as a big linebacker but he has showcased since getting to green bay 
that he is an elite player at this position, one of the smartest players at this position, one of the most consistent cover players at this position, and a not half bad run defender as well. Campbell is definitely one of the top linebackers in the league. At number 11, CJ Mosley of the New York Jets. CJ Mosley is the player at linebacker in the NFL that I watch and I say, I understand how much people know about football or actually watch football or the New York Jets by what they say about CJ Mosley. Because there's a lot of people that actually disrespect CJ Mosley. There's over the years, not been the most respect coming out of PFF's direction when it comes to CJ Mosley. And despite his consistency, despite his intelligence, he's one of the smartest linebackers in football and has been for a very long time. His tackling ability is up there at the elite level. He always is up there in terms of tackles in the NFL. And I think he's a very underrated cover player. He's not the fastest guy out there, but he's just really savvy. His ability to find where quarterbacks are looking and kind of understand route concepts and then be able to jump the football or get his hands on the football. Again, got good length and good size for the position. And he's just phenomenal in the running game. He's very powerful, very strong, and he, he doesn't have that great downhill speed anymore, but his just ability to feel out and then attack the football when he needs to attack it is elite. I think CJ Mosley is arguably the smartest player at this position in the league and he deserves that recognition he's my number 11 on my list entering the top 10 bobby wagner returning to the seattle seahawks he is now once again a seahawk after having a huge year with the la rams a big bounce back year in my opinion with the la rams playing once again an elite level that is bobby wagner now Bobby Wagner doesn't rank in my top five because he's not the best athlete anymore. Like he doesn't move similar to a CJ Mosley doesn't move the way that some of the best linebackers in football do the way they recklessly can run after the football or cover at an elite level. Bobby Wagner is just incredibly smart. He is way more powerful than I think he gets credit for because he's not the biggest in terms of measurables but he is extremely strong. He's a great player in almost every regard. He's proven to be a good blitzer at the line of scrimmage. He's been proven to be an excellent run defender over the years. And again, he's got the rare quickness, agility, and power and strength to be able to play in any system and any scheme over the past decade. And he's got the incredible IQ to also drop back into coverage. He's not, again, the mover that he used to be in space, but he's still such a good player and actually was graded as PFF's number one linebacker last year. So, I mean, the guy still got it, and I'm looking forward to seeing him back in Seattle. It just didn't feel right in LA last year. At number nine, Foye Aluakon of the Jacksonville Jags. Talk about a linebacker that doesn't get the respect that he deserves. Foye Aluakon led the PFF stops statistic in 2022, and yet nobody talks about him as an elite linebacker in this league. He is pretty much the best playmaking linebacker in this league when it comes to negative plays generated at this position because he is reckless, he is fearless, and he is extremely explosive. He is fast, he is quick, his change of direction is ludicrous. Foye Aluakon is a phenomenal athlete at this position and does not care whatsoever where the ball is going he's chasing the football and he's tackling you he does not care and then when it comes to the passing game he's not elite but he's getting better and he's showcased his leadership capabilities on the field by becoming that communicator at middle linebacker making sure that Devin Lloyd and everyone else knows what they're doing on the defensive side of the football for Jacksonville. This guy has been worth every penny for Jacksonville so far on this contract, and I think he's only getting better. At number eight, Tremaine Edmonds of the Chicago Bears. Since being drafted, Tremaine Edmonds has had an absolute roller coaster of a career. Up and down, bust, all pro, and in 2022, he finally honed in on that athleticism that raw talent that everyone saw the size 
the length, the speed, everything. The guy has it all. He can be the best linebacker in football, and that's why Chicago paid him. They paid him because of 2022 and beyond. Because in 2022, he really showcased a guy in coverage that's savvy, that's smart, that knows how to get in passing lanes, knock down footballs, which he led the NFL in forced incompletions this past season. And he's also got the speed to match up, the size to match up with numerous different players offensively, tight ends especially. And then he's great in zone. I think he's going to be a perfect fit for Eberflus's defense. And of course, he has the size in the running game. Now, I still think he's kind of figuring out how to utilize his athleticism in the running game. He's still trying to get a smarter player in that regard of the game. But I feel like, especially in coverage, he has grown into his own. And I think that's going to be the biggest asset for Chicago's defense this next year is Edmonds covering up space in the middle of the field for their defense. At number seven, Dre Greenlaw of the San Francisco 49ers. Dre Greenlaw is, because he's got Fred Warner with him, super underrated, man. Dre Greenlaw is an absolute beast. There's really nothing that Dre Greenlaw does not do at a really high level, other than maybe he doesn't contribute the most turnovers. Other than that, though, he is a missile, like a human bullet in the running game. There is maybe not a single linebacker in the NFL that is better at pursuing the football in the pass or the run game than Dre Greenlaw. A little swing pass to the running back, bam, Dre Greenlaw is there. A little shallow cross, bam, Dre Greenlaw is there. If you want to know why San Francisco's defense looks so fast, it's Dre Greenlaw. He is really good, and then he's really good in coverage. There are not a lot of teams that ask their linebackers to cover as much space, as much ground, and have as much responsibility in coverage as San Francisco. And Greenlaw is great in that aspect as well. So he is an elite linebacker. He just doesn't get the recognition because Fred Warner is beside him all the time. At number six, Levante David of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Levante David, as far as I'm concerned, is a Hall of Fame linebacker. He's been so good for so long. He's not at his peak anymore physically, but he's still one of the savviest and smartest linebackers in football, and he certainly still has speed and quickness to his game, where he is one of the best in the running game. His ability to flow and feel the running game out and make tackle after tackle after tackle. He's so consistent, so reliable. He's always available, and he's a great leader, a great personality, a great culture guy for Tampa Bay. And he has been for years, whether they've been losing or winning, Levante David has been a steady force for that defense, no matter the scheme or their place in the standings, Levante David just does his thing. And he's a good cover player as well. I wouldn't say he's a great matchup player, but in terms of spot drop zone coverage, he is one of the best there is. So Levante David just continues to shine as one of the best linebackers in football in my opinion, a future Hall of Famer. Entering the top five linebackers in the NFL, Demario Davis of the New Orleans Saints. Demario Davis is such a weird player in this day and age. He is the best linebacker that doesn't really fit this era. He's bigger, stronger, more physical than pretty much every other great linebacker in the league but he still moves well enough and he's used in a way in new orleans where all of his assets can shine i would say he's been consistently since dante hightower the best blitzing downhill run stopping combination of a linebacker the size the burst downhill and the power and ability to pass rush. The combination of skills is a rare breed in this NFL. And I think Demario Davis does it better than anybody. His impact on the passing game isn't as much felt in coverage as it is as a blitzer or as a pass rusher. But he's also pretty good in coverage. When they ask him to drop back in coverage, he definitely can do it. He doesn't move like some of the other elite linebackers in this league. 
but man his power his size his strength is also a huge asset in the running game as well where he can fit gaps that usually linebackers like him off the ball don't typically do so demario davis is a rare breed as an elite linebacker in this league at number four matt milano of the buffalo bills matt milano just continues to progress as an elite linebacker in this league for a long time one of my favorite players even when a lot of people didn't know who he was you know, watching buffalo's defense he's always stood out for his smarts and his coverage ability this guy can cover man he is arguably the best in the sport at both manning up tracking and matching tight ends and receivers and then also having responsibility to sometimes match those slot receivers down the middle of the field and then at the same time be a great run defender and just be reckless and that's what really stood out to me this past year is his ability in the running game just to come up and pop people i at times saw a side of matt milano that we haven't seen in my opinion in his career he's always been more of a finesse good coverage linebacker and smart player but i really felt like this year we saw a lot more aggression from him a lot more power from him and a side of him that i think completed his game to place him inside my top five linebackers in the nfl incredibly good for a defense that asks so much of the linebacker position at number three darius leonard of the indianapolis colts now darius leonard didn't play a lot in 2022 but his track record as i believe a former three-time all pro one of the game's best playmaking linebackers interceptions forced fumbles constantly causing turnovers for the opposing offense i think rightfully he deserves to be here at number three inside the top three linebackers in the game when he's on the field he is a game changer in a way that a lot of linebackers in this day and age just aren't his ability to change the game with a single play is rare and he is good at everything darius leonard can blitz darius leonard can play the run darius leonard can cover with the best of them Darius Leonard has a complete game. The only thing that concerns you about Darius Leonard is really his availability. At times, he's missed too many games for my liking, and maybe some of that is his size, the ability to take a beating at his position where you're constantly playing with contact is certainly concerning, but his range, his smarts, and his playmaking are what still place him inside my top three entering 2023 at number two roquan smith of the baltimore ravens i think he's the highest paid linebacker in the nfl today and there's a reason for that roquan smith showcased his value when he was traded to the baltimore ravens he was always a player that i wasn't sure he really matched the hype coming out of college and it took him a little bit to get to that elite level in Chicago, you always wondered, is he a good player that stands out on a bad team and a bad defense? And maybe he gets too much praise from his fan base. But in Baltimore, he goes to an already good defense and he makes them a great defense. His range, his speed, his athleticism was showcased. His intelligence to pick up a system seemingly overnight was in extremely impressive. And man, this guy does it all well. He's an absolute beast in the run game because of his speed and his explosion it's just hard to block him even though he's a little bit undersized he's a bullet and then in the past game man forget it he's got great great range so he is the modern linebacker he could play in the run game he could play in the pass game he can play near the line of scrimmage he's hard to get his ha your hands on him and he is completing that lineage of ray lewis and ravens linebackers over the years this guy's exactly what baltimore needed and they got him long term roquan smith is arguably the best linebacker in the nfl and the best linebacker in the nfl today is once again fred warner of the san francisco 49ers fred warner is the best linebacker in the nfl 
And it's for one simple reason. The things that Fred Warner being on your football team, playing the middle linebacker position, allow you to do, other teams cannot do with their linebackers. Fred Warner is so good in coverage that it's like having a corner playing linebacker, but he's also tall and pretty big and aggressive in the running game. And this past year, he was one of the best run defenders in football. So you would think that being that good in coverage, that fluid, the ability to change direction the way that he does to match quick slot receivers, to play against tight ends, the best receiving tight ends in football, to be able to knock down passes with the length and range that he does in coverage. He also is extremely smart. He's just a cheat code because he really is affected by no personnel. The Niners can just play their defense. It doesn't really matter because he's just that good. So that's why to me, at the foundation, if you're wondering why Fred Warner is regarded as the best linebacker in football, it's because it doesn't matter who he's covering. It doesn't matter what type of personnel the offense has. The Niners just do what they do because Fred Warner is that good. Those are my top 25 linebackers in the NFL today. I hope you enjoyed my countdown of the very best off-ball linebackers in the NFL. If you did, Gronk, spike the like button. Don't forget to subscribe for more NFL rankings just like this. It's Mitch. Thank you so much for watching this video, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace!